Okay, so now what I'd like to do is ask a different question uh, using the same, t the same template. Uh, the question for this one is, you analyze the primary amino acid sequence of two proteins. The results of your analysis are shown below. Again, we came to the conclusion that protein A, because it has more nonpolar amino acids, it's mostly nonpolar. Protein B, uh, it has more polar amino acids, so it's mostly polar. Now, the question in this case is, which protein would be more likely to fold in a polar environment? So the last video, we're talking about nonpolar environment. In this video, we're talking about a polar environment, okay? So uh, again, this, the favorability, again, we have to refer to the delta G to know if our protein is going to fold. So delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So again, our goal is to make the delta G more negative because the more negative our delta G is, the more spontaneous our reaction is, okay? So again, we have two things we can manipulate, the delta A and the delta S. And I copied down uh, the chart from the previous video talking about how we got the enthalpy and entropy. Um, so again, because we are roughly forming the same strength of bonds uh, before and after folding in a polar environment, we're gonna say that effectively the delta H is going to be near zero, okay? And let's do it like this. So now what we have to look at is the delta S, okay? So the delta S of the protein, we said that it's a small negative, right? We said that the reason why it's a small negative is because the protein goes from something like this to like this, and because it has less freedom of motion, that's going to give it a negative delta S. Now, the thing is, notice over here we said that, remember we said that there was something very, very important happening over here. It was called the hydrophobic effect. And if I go back over here to that drawing that I, that I showed you guys, we talked about how there were ordered water cages and water can't make the optimal number of H, H bonds. It's, an, it's, an un, it's, an, it's in an unfavorable state. So what ends up happening is that when two nonpolar regions of your, pro, of your protein come together, they're basically gonna uh, minimize the surface area of those nonpolar regions so that we can basically break water out of those ordered water cages. And over time, as more and more nonpolar regions come and clump together and they go into the core of our protein, we're gonna free our water molecules from all the water cages, effectively increasing the entropy of water. And because this outweighs the negative delta S of the protein, we're gonna have an overall positive delta S of the system, okay? Now, let me ask you this question. If I redrew our protein, so imagine now we put protein A and protein B into two different cups, okay? So we got right over here protein A, and we said that protein A, if I'm, just so that I'm sure on this, protein A, we said that it was mostly nonpolar, okay? So let's just label this A, and we said that mostly nonpolar, and we said B is mostly polar, okay? So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm just gonna draw protein A, and we're just gonna put a lot of nonpolar regions in it. So these are just multiple nonpolar regions. I know it doesn't look exactly like this, but bear with me, okay? And then what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna do protein B, and we're just gonna put very few, maybe one nonpolar region, and that's it. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our water molecules, and I'm, I'm not gonna really draw all the water molecules because I don't really wanna do that, but I'm gonna just draw the water cages for you guys. Notice how protein A, look at how many water cages protein A is forming. All these water molecules are gonna be trapped in these ordered conformations, whereas protein B only forms like that one tiny water cage, which is uh, holding those water molecules, a smaller amount of water molecules, uh, inside of that water cage. Now, you might think to yourself well, and say, oh, this is so much better because we have a smaller amounts of water cages. However, if you think about it, what ends up happening at the ends of our protein folding? Effectively, both of these cases go to the same results, right? They both go to that folded protein where we free up water molecules. So now ask yourself, does protein A or protein B free up more water molecules? Well, since protein A has way more nonpolar regions, it had more water cages. So what the delta S of H2O in this case is significantly greater 
than the delta S of H2O in this case. So which one do you think is more likely to fold then? It's actually gonna be protein number A because it has more nonpolar regions so we can even more greatly increase the delta S of water. And if we can make the delta S of water even larger, because we can make this a much bigger number, the bigger we can make this term, the more bit, the bigger we can make this term, and then we can make overall the delta S more positive over here to make the delta G. So this increases this, which increases the delta G or makes it more negative. And that helps our protein folds. 